Round five turned into a bleak day in the career of defending GNCC champion Shane Watts. His DNF, for personal reasons, cost him the points lead and legions of fans. While Shane sat, the color returned to the championship hopes of Rodney Smith. A second place finish was as good as a win for the two-time former champion. And what of the victor, flying Fred Andrews? He comes into Kentucky as a true gladiator and the man to beat here at round six. The Kentucky countryside is about to come alive with the rolling thunder of motorcycles. Welcome to round six of the Grand National Cross Country Series from Sparta, Kentucky. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Myers, here to bring you what is really a motorcycle marathon race in the woods. Now they will race for some three hours over a track that is 11 mile long. Now get this, the track consists of rocks. There are uphills, there are downhills, there are stumps, there are stream crossings. Anything they can find to throw at the riders, they will throw at them. They'll have to go over, under, or through the obstacles on the race course. Now to help me bring all this spectacular race action to you is our Fox Sportsnet off-road expert analyst Mark Hyde who has been here before. Mark, did I describe that track pretty well? I don't think you left out a thing. <laughs> Mark has done this a time or two. You know, what I find uh, to be the story of the day is the withdrawal of our defending champ, Shane Watts, in round five. He was the points leader and just plain let it go. Yeah, it was really surprising. He did the full Roberto Duran, no moss. And it was unusual because he crashed off the start, and then after that he got rolling really well. He got with the leaders, and I thought the hard part of the day was over. I thought... You know, he's going to stay up front. He'll be there because the train we were in at Loretta's is very similar to his hometown in Australia. But, you know, he just gave it to Rodney Smith. And Rodney, he took advantage of the mistake or the, the give up, if you want to call it that. So, Shane, he's got a lot of explaining to do to sponsors and fans. And maybe this just might motivate him to stay up front for the whole time now. Yeah, I think actually Shane was leading and he pulled in for gas at, what, the end of three laps? And uh, he just parked his bike, got off, and he didn't finish the race. We're going to let that healing process begin. Shane Watts now is standing by with our own Bob Walker. Shane Watts, two wins this season, number one plate from last year. Tell me a little bit about what happened at Loretta Williams last week. Well, I just got to the stage where I just wasn't enjoying my racing. I had a few things I got to figure out, and since then I've been able to, like, you know, get things under control, and um, I'm feeling good again, and you know, happy to be at the races here, and so I'm looking for a good ride today. Now, what about your fans and sponsors that, that, that expect you to finish what you started? Yeah, and it, from Loretta's, I was very disappointed. They're quite devastated, actually, that, you know, I let all my fans and my sponsors down and uh, by pulling off the track. But I wasn't enjoying myself, and I, I'm really here just to have fun. You know, that's what the main thing I want to achieve out of my life, and I wasn't having fun at Loretta's. I got to the stage where I thought it was time to pull off, so I did, and, um, but... Other than that, like, yeah, I'm here, back here, back into the series now, and hopefully to, you know, charge to the finish and wrap up the championship. And I believe that if everything goes my way, if I, like, you know, ride strong, um, there's no reason why I won't end up with the number one plate again for next year. Now, I'm sure you got a call from Rod Bush on Monday morning. What did he have to say? Well, Rod was very understanding. He's a former racer. He's, um, he's been in the same position I was. He understands how I was feeling, so he was very supportive, and that's the great thing about uh, KTM Sport Motorcycle. We're all like a family, and he's not going to come in and like, you know, start yelling and screaming at me. He wants to support me as well as, I, as, as he can, and um, it, it was you know, very, very good of KTM to yeah, their response to it, and yeah, the following weekend I went to the National Hair Scramble one by five minutes, so yeah, things are, are working well again, I think, and like I said, I'm, I'm looking for a great result today. Well, Mark, there's one thing I know for sure. With Shane Watts out of the way and not finishing that race, it turned out to be the most spectacular race of the season. Oh, you, without a doubt. The Suzuki Trio, Rodney Smith, Steve Hatch, Mike Kurdowski, they were all up front right, right where they needed to be. And Rodney, he did a great job of putting in two really good finishes this year back-to-back -back for the first time. Yeah, and Rodney stopped for gas on the last lap. That might have cost him a win. 
It might have, but with Shane Watts being out today, they didn't want to gamble like they did in Georgia when Steve Hatch ran out of gas. So by doing this, they ensured Rodney a second place finish and also the points lead, which uh, is what he's used to because in 98 and 99, he won the championship and it looks like he's on form to do that again this year. So Rodney Smith left Tennessee with the points lead. Now that's certainly not a comfortable margin and the fact of the matter is with seven rounds still to go, Shane Watts didn't hurt himself too badly with the DNF at round five. But Mark, let's put the points battle on hold and talk about the guy that did go fast, extremely fast, at Loretta Lynn's. I'm talking about fast Freddie Andrews. Oh, the team green rider Freddie Andrews just did a great job today. He went down that first corner with Shane Watts, but you know, after that happened, he didn't let it bother him. He just kept working at it, chipping away at the leaders. He got to the front. His pit people just did an outstanding job made sure everything went smoothly there. And Freddie, he's one of those guys, he's a never give up guy. He's uh, just an Iron Man mentality. And he just worked and worked and worked and, and got to the front. And that's where he ended up for the day. I'll tell you what, it was one of the most inspiring rides that I have ever seen. It was really tremendous. Now, Fred has slowed down just a little bit. In fact, uh, enough so that our own Jen Hildreth could catch up to it. Fred Andrews' first win of 2001 came in what has been one of the toughest GNCCs of the season. As many as six top riders failed to finish what they started, but Andrews caught up and passed the rest after a terrible start. Why were you able to hang in there when so many of your top competitors couldn't do it? I think conditioning's got a little bit to do with it. I've been working hard at it and you know, a little bit of luck. A little bit of luck goes a long way and you know, I'm just happy to win that race. It was a long, long, hard race. When did you know that Shane Watts had dropped out of the race? Well, Shane and I crashed in the first turn together, and that actually gave me a little bit of hope that I could come through and win that race. And we could stop for gas, and I didn't know that Shane never came out. So I guess I really never knew till the end. Okay, after a season that started on such a sour note, the injury in Florida, finished in the top five each of the last three rounds. Are you all the way back, 100% healthy? Yeah, I'm 100% healthy. My Cornwall Kawasaki, it's ready to win races, and I was holding it back, so I'm healthy and it's ready, so we're out to win races. What's it going to take to win two in a row? Probably a good start. It's going to be really dusty here today. And I'd like to have some luck on my side, and I think it'll bring it out on top. All right, well, Fred's teammate Paul Edmondson suffered a shoulder injury while leading the pack at round five. Chuck Woodford had a DNF with mechanical. Fred's win gives the Kawasaki team a little hope heading into round six. So the slate is wiped clean, and once again, it's anyone's championship to win. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at this rough and tumble track, set the field, and then go racing. Sport motorcycles. And by CD Boots. Welcome back. I'm Larry Myers along with Mark Hyde. A little bit of water being dumped on the track to try to control the dust, at least at the start of this race. Now, the umbrellas you see, not for rain, but trying to keep the riders in just a little bit of shade, uh, make it a little bit more comfortable for them before this race gets underway. Mark, what are we looking for out here today? Well, the guys, if they're going to do good today, they're going to have to put up with some dust. Uh, the promoters have done the best they can to keep the track in the woods as much as possible, but in the open sections, over 12 miles, we're going to get out there. There's going to be some dust and also some rocks hidden in that dust. Well, the ex situation existed one week ago when we watched the ATV race. They put up with a problem and turned out to be a very, very exciting race. And I'm looking for more of the same today. Let's go to Bob Walker, who earlier took a look at the racetrack. One of the many obstacles the riders are going to be facing today here in Sparta, Kentucky are the dust conditions. They are just horrible today. We're here at one of the practice sessions early in the day, and look at these conditions already. When the pros come through here, they're not even going to be able to see what they're riding over. Right here are some rocks that are embedded in the track, and the track is lined with these rocks throughout. You catch a front tire on this rock here, you could be cartwheeling down the rest of this straightaway. And believe me, this ground is not soft stuff here. It is slick like concrete, and it will be ripping skin off knees and elbows. Ripping skin? Mark, I got to tell you, Bob's reports scare me. <laughs> so the riders are making their way uh, down to the start line. The pros are already there, and our Jen Hildreth is with them. And here is Shane Watts. Shane trailing in points for the first time. Different strategy coming in today? No, exactly the same strategy. Go out and try and have fun and have the best race possible. I know like KTM and MSR, my great sponsors, they're fully behind me and with their great products, I've got an excellent chance of getting on the podium. Okay, Shane, I gotta ask, are there going to be any surprises for us today from you? Well, hopefully there's no surprises. Uh, 
hopefully uh, me winning is, is not a surprise. So hopefully that's what happens. All right, we'll see how that turns out. Next to Shane, we've got Fred Andrews. Fred winning the last round. Uh, Fred, what do you feel going into today? I feel good. Hopefully I can keep it going on to this week. It's a little bit dusty and maybe a little bit more dangerous than last race. But uh, I'll put my Pro Circuit Kawasaki out front, hopefully, and let them try to catch me. Okay, now we're going to head over to Rodney Smith, who is leading in points right now. Rodney, how do you feel coming into today's race? It's been really good. I'd like to get my Suzuki out front early with this dust and stuff. And like Freddie said, it's a little more dust or dangerous today. And uh, so I think the start's going to be real important. I hope to get my Suzuki out front early. Sounds to me like that is the key as we take a look at the starting order. Watts, Andrews, Hatch, Blackwell, and on down the line. So if the key is the start, if you find yourself back in a pack, will you be able to make passes? Yes, you'll be able to make some passes, but it'll be more difficult. And what you have to be careful of is if you're too far back, the leaders, they can get away from you pretty quick on a dusty day. So you can bet that 100% of the riders on the line are concentrated on the start. Here they go. It was a dead engine start. You saw them kick the engines to life and into the first corner. And Fred Andrews gets there first. Yep, Freddie's in the lead and he's followed right by Rodney Smith and Josh McLevy. Rodney and Freddie, those were the two guys that were 1-2 at Loretta Lynn's. And they're both excellent dust riders. Rodney, he wins a lot of races in the dust being from California. He gets in these conditions more, so we'll have to see what his strategy is for today. Now, we talked about the leaders, but I'll tell you who we did not see as we watch uh, Andrew Smith, uh, Josh McLevy. We did not see Shane Watts up front. Now, Shane's riding a 125. I'm not sure if that'll be an advantage or a disadvantage in this condition, but he is going to have to come through the pack. Yes, he is, and this is going to be one of the few water holes we see. There goes Mike Lafferty. Oh, there's uh, There goes Shane right there on his KTM 200. Uh, not a 125, but he's got a little more horsepower than that, but it wasn't enough to get him off the line in real good shape today. And he definitely has his work cut out for him. So there's a water hole early on, but look beyond that water hole, and you can see the dust cloud that was raised. And the riders, uh, this early in the race, being so far strung out, it's obvious that vision is a problem. Fred Andrews, though, taking advantage of a clear track ahead of him, is able to gas it up at will. Here comes Rodney Smith in second place, and wow, would you look at the gap all the way back to, we couldn't even see him make that corner. Josh yeah. McLevy, who was running third. Yeah, this is what the riders are gonna see as you get further back in the pack, and this is where Shane is really gonna struggle trying to get through this, and Rodney, He's in second place right now. What he needs to do is just kind of stay out of the dust. You see Freddie, he's out here, nice shape, clear vision. And what this is really going to help with like air filters. At the quad race, we saw Bill Balance have some problems with his air filter getting plugged late in the day. Rodney's got to kind of just sit back, let that dust settle a little bit, and then wait for Freddie Andrews to get into lap traffic, and that's when he needs to make his move to try to get to the front. Now, when the riders string out just a little bit, will that alleviate the dust problem? Yes, it will. It'll give the chance to the dust to settle, but at the same time, when you're letting the dust settle, the leaders are getting away. Fred Andrews trying to get away. He would love to make a breakaway. However, Levy, Josh McLevy, and uh, Smith have both closed the gap as we jump on board our KTM Moto Cam. Yeah, we're jumped in right here behind Rodney Smith. We'll watch him through the woods. Now, the woods, you can see it's not as dusty in here, and this is where you need to get on the guy if you're going to try to pass him, get set up, and make your move when you're in here where you can actually see the course. Rodney Smith trailing Fred Andrews, who is uh, just a few yards in front. We'll be back with more race action. Welcome back to GNCC Racing. This is Cross Country Racing at its finest. It gets no better. Fred Andrews is the leader. You saw him on the green motorcycle. Now trailing behind right there, number 31, that is uh, Rodney Smith, the two-time champ. He's in second place, and here is third place, young Josh McLevy, rider number 711. Now, you can see that these riders have left a gap between themselves, and uh, Mark, I just wonder if they have done that because of the uh, dust situation. Yes, you have to, unless you're right on a guy's rear wheel. If you get back at all, it gives the dust a chance to get up in the air and you can't see. So you've got to give that dust a chance to settle so you can see all those rocks and tree roots that you've got to avoid throughout the day. Right, we saw Jason Raines come through in the number 10 position. Right in front of him was uh, the number one machine. That, of course, belonged to Shane Watts. So Shane is running back in ninth. Wow, just look at that. Yeah, and Shane, he's going to have a real struggle to catch up with Freddie and Rodney today. Those guys, they've kind of got out front. they got a good pace going. And 
by the time Shane gets through all those lapped riders, he's going to have a tough time catching these two. In the background, that's Kentucky Speedway, the NASCAR track. And then we saw a couple of the Suzuki pit crew right there, and earlier you saw some of the KTM and Kawasaki guys. They'll be out on this course throughout the day, giving their riders pit signals, telling them where they're at, when they need to get gas, and, and probably, too, with as hot a day as they've had, reminding these guys to hit their drink systems that they're all carrying. No one has to remind Fred Andrews where he is at. He is the leader and uh, getting close to putting a lap in the books here. Now, there's a punch check that is located inside. You see him right in the end of that barn, and they take a while before they get out. There's actually a checkpoint inside at the ATV race. It was outside, but I think the guys moved in there because it was cooler. Yeah, it's nice cooling in the shade there, and the riders probably actually want to spend a little extra time in there. Tough conditions, but uh, we're looking at tough riders, and uh, I couldn't express that enough to you. They are in excellent physical condition, and even though they are in that kind of shape, the course often beats them down. A point uh, I think could be made for that if we go back to Hurricane Mills in Tennessee. When the race was over, it was so hot there they kept plugging. Two of the riders had to go for IVs. Let's meet the riders. Afterwards, you know, probably an hour afterwards, I was drinking fluid and trying to get water in me and everything, and I, it was probably a little bit too late and started to get on my street clothes. and. Man, my legs cramped up and my arms and back and everything. I said, well, I think I need to, you know, get an IV or something because I'm in pretty bad shape and ended up having to go to the hospital and get an IV. And within 30 minutes, man, I felt like I hadn't even raced. So that helped a lot. Um, today here at Kentucky, it's it's still hot and stuff, but uh, I don't know if we'll have the same conditions as Loretta Lens. Loretta Lens is a real rough track. It was a 13-mile race um, each lap, so really uh, real used up trail, I guess you could say. So here it's a pretty new place. We've only had one race here last year. So I think the conditions will be a little bit better. And, and I don't think you'll see as many guys fading like you did at Loretta Lens. At the uh, eight mile marker, probably um, on the last lap, I just uh, I just start, I just got dehydrated. I had to pull over. I couldn't go any farther, and and uh, hit me pretty hard. It wasn't like I started gradually going downhill because I normally can tell when it's uh, when it's happening. But you know, I I don't know I don't know what it really to pinpoint it on what happened really. Just that uh, you know maybe I need to drink more beforehand and stuff like that, and um, you know prepare a little bit better. Well, it's a tough sport, a tough racetrack, and the guys that participate in the GNCC series are extremely tough. Like this guy, Fred Andrews. This is only his uh, fifth race of the season. Everyone else is putting uh, his sixth into the book, but Fred missed the opener. In fact, he's done that two times in a row. He lost a whole bunch of points, but he's riding himself back into shape, trying to stay ahead right now of this guy, Rodney Smith, who is a former two-time champion, and Josh McLevy, who is running a third. He's one of the younger riders on the circuit, but uh, doing a good job out here today. And another one of the younger riders doing a good job and bouncing back well from Loretta Lins is Mike Lafferty. He's up front early, hopefully hitting that drink system this week. It's Andrew Smith, McLevy, and Lafferty. We're into lap number one. A lot more to come. This is the Gladiator. We're in Sparta, Kentucky. Grand National Championship Cross Country Racing. Here comes your leader, Fred Andrews. He's been there since the outset. And this guy has been in second. And amidst all of that dust, look at the mud that they found. Here's Josh McLevy in third. Boy, that kind of really throws you off sometimes. Here you're just battling the dust. Boom, all of a sudden you pop out and there's a mud hole you got to get through. <laughs> mud, mud hole and water holes. Look at that. To the riders, that's probably a welcome relief. Yeah, that's probably one of their most favorite sections on the track, except for Freddie. He's out front. There's nobody in front of him making dust. So he's probably dragging his feet a little bit extra while he's up there. We talked a little bit about the rocks uh, on this course, and you get a sampling of it right there. As uh, we see uh, Jenks and Watts, who is all the way up to seventh, battle over the number six position. Uh, and they uh, are traveling this course, ignoring those rocks, which is what you have to do if you want to be fast. You just kind of grab a handful of throttle and go. Yes, and if you saw Shane, he was right on Robbie's rear wheel. And when it's dusty like this, if you're not right there, you won't be able to see. You see how Rodney's having to fight Freddie's dust up there. So that's where you have to be to make time and dust. And Rodney, he's one of the better guys in conditions like this. He's from California. He's used to riding in these type of trains. And not just the dust, but the dirt gets real slippery. And so he's real comfortable in these situations. Okay, Watts has gotten around Jenks now and has moved up to the number six position. So Watts has uh, come from way off the pace. We talked earlier about 
probably he would not be able to catch the leaders. Well, I want to take all that back. I'm sorry if I said anything at all, because Watts is definitely gaining. Fred Andrews, your leader. Yeah, and he's probably gaining also, too, because Freddie, he's, I can't see Freddie being in a big hurry here. He's just so comfortable out front. He doesn't have to fight with all these conditions that the other guys do, so uh, that's probably letting uh, Shane catch up a little bit here. And Mike Lafferty has closed the gap just slightly, so it would appear that uh, your observation is correct. Maybe Fred has indeed slowed the pace, although I would think that being out in front and not having to fight dust would be the perfect opportunity, Mark, to lengthen the lead. That, that's, uh, that would seem to me to, to be the, the factor there. Yeah, and Freddie, if he doesn't do that, what Rodney's probably doing back there is just sitting on him waiting to catch up to the lap traffic. When we get in that situation, then the whole course will be pretty much equal. And that's when you want to make your move if you're Rodney right now. Steve Hatch is running back quite a way. That surprises me. Steve is a veteran of uh, GNCC races, and he knows what these conditions are all about. And uh, Watts is right on the tail of... Uh, that was Chuck Woodford he Chuck was right Woodford, behind. Yeah. yeah, you kind of get that three and eight mixed up with him and Freddie. That made me stop. It made me think, like, holy cow, how did he get up there that quick? Yeah. Oh, Rodney getting, get, catching a tree right there. But this is where you got to make up your time. In the woods, you can see there's not the dust, and there's some other lines developing. Our cameraman's hiding behind the tree there, so these guys don't mow him over. I can't say as I blame him a bit. You don't let a thing like a little sapling get in your way, that's for sure. No, you can't let that happen to you. And you saw Rodney Smith. He was going for his drink system right there. All the riders carry a drink system. It holds about two quarts. They put a lot of ice in it before the race because by the time they get to the end of the race, that ice is melted and keeps it a little bit cooler. And it's important to go to your drink system early. That's what is uh, strapped on their back. I thought that was a picnic lunch in a backpack. And you tell me that it's full of water and ice? It's, you, you've disillusioned me here. <laughs> it's ice, and a lot of them have different concoctions they put in there. Some of them, even if they know it's going to be a real tough race, they'll crush up some aspirin and put it in there so they already got their pain medicine before they get hurt. Andrew, Smith, McLevy. And now, a uh, factor in the tight woods, as you would expect him to be, is uh, Mike Lafferty. Lafferty is the Enduro champ. He's probably the fastest guy out here in the woods, so he will definitely make up ground there. Yes, he will, and the racer production did an excellent job of finding a lot of nice woods. This is a new facility. We raced here last year for the first time, so this is only the second race we've had here, and they've done a nice job of tying the woods together with a lot of these neat grass track sections. We're heading into the barn checkpoint. Fred Andrews will be the first rider through. You can see him. Look at the difference. It's a perfect place to look. Do you see what Fred is riding with, what he's faced with on the racetrack? Absolutely nothing but clean air. Now, the riders behind him have to eat Fred's dust. And the guy that's in third, that's McLevy, he has to eat Fred's dust along with Rodney Smith's dust. So it's a difficult situation when you have to breathe as well as see. So there are a couple of factors there. And also, too, another factor is the mechanics had to set the bikes up for these conditions. You have to put uh, filter skins on your air filters and do a couple other things so the bike runs good for three hours. Andrew's out of the barn. He takes a quick... Oh, oh Mike Lafferty! Lafferty. Mike Lafferty! Oh, he's never going to live that down. He will never live that down. Andrew Smith, McLevy, and Lafferty. You know, behind every great racer, there's a hard-working wife. Let's meet a few. Weeks of preparation, long hours on the road, anxious moments of trepidation and fear, all coupled with a strong, burning desire to win. Think we're just talking about the guys on the bikes? Think again. The wives of the GNCC riders may not be on the driver's seat, but many of them play a huge part in their husband's success. Yeah, I think the last eight years I've missed two or three races. So, yeah, one time I was due with a baby and I didn't want to travel real far. And uh, just other times I needed to stay home with her when she was smaller. But I don't like to stay home. It's worse, you know, just being there waiting to find out what's going on. And during the races, Kristen usually knows more about what's going on with her husband than anyone else in the Yamaha tent. Actually, I'm involved a great bit. You know, I like to know what's going on and, you know, what we have in front of us to deal with and everything. So, yes, I like being involved. Lori Smith is another GNCC wife who's not afraid to get her hands dirty. And she's come a long way since her first race by Rodney's side. Go, honey. Go, honey. You're doing great. That's, that's basically all I did. And, and now, you know, I work with his mechanic. I go out on the motorcycle and I hit him and, and he's actually really made me a part of his career, which is awesome. 
Amy Andrews has had to step back from the actual hands-on work for her Kawasaki star, but even a pair of one-year-old twins hasn't kept her too far away. We are all with him. We're, we support him all the way, even when he's not riding, just when he has to go practicing, the boys come. We got a larger trailer that we could travel with him, and um, we're still there for support. You know, this off-road is a family sport. You know, it's different than motocross where just like a rider and mechanic come to the races. In this sport, it's family and everybody comes, everybody hangs out and everybody has fun. Yet no matter how much fun these husband and wife teams may be having, there is more than a little fear each time those bikes take off into the woods. He knows what he's gonna do, he knows how to do it, but he never predicts what somebody else is gonna do. So I think that scares me more than anything. When it comes to predicting how much the wives and families mean to the riders though, the answer is clear. You know, being gone almost every weekend and stuff like that, if I don't make her a part of it, it just isn't going to be nice when I get home. And uh, it's, she's enjoyed motorcycle riding. She didn't know anything about it when I brought her into it. And uh, now I think she likes to ride as much as I do, you know. Mark, now you were best man at Rodney Smith's wedding. Could you tell me what Bruzuka means? Uh, that was his nickname he had down in when he was winning motocross championships in Brazil. So it's something in Brazilian, and it's supposed to be pretty good, he told me. Bruzuka baby. <laughs> well, Brazuca Baby right now is running in second place. There he is, number 31. That is Rodney Smith. In front of him, Fred Andrews. And holding down to number three position is Shane, Shane Watts. Wow, Shane has turned the afterburners on. He's got right up here with the leaders. I didn't think he was going to be able to do that with that bad start he had today. What a surprise. The dust cleared, or I should say through the dust. It never cleared. Shane Watts emerged in third place. So he has really been on the gas. He was way, way back. And there is Lori Smith and her pit board telling husband Rodney just what to do. So we've been giving Rodney way too much credit. I think from now on we'll give it all to Lori. She probably deserves it way more than him. And here comes Mike Lafferty running around in the fourth place. I think, too, Shane, after his performance at Loretta Lynn's, he knows he let these guys get back in the series. He had a firm grasp on it, and by DNF and Loretta Lynn's, he let these guys get some confidence, sneak back in here. So I think he's riding extra hard today to prove a point. On board with a KTM Moto Cam, and we'll jump in behind Rodney Smith, I believe. Yeah, we're in here behind Rodney in second place. He's still chasing down Freddie Andrews, probably learning some lines. That's one thing on a dusty course, you really got to spend some time early in the race learning the course because it, when it gets dusty, you kind of want to know what's under the ground there. I question, Mark, whether or not a pass can be made in these, uh, these conditions, the woods, for example. I see no room there for anyone to make any kind of a serious effort at getting around. Now, you go to the open areas where it's so, so dusty, and uh, it, it looks to me like maybe, just maybe, Rodney is sitting back and biding his time because uh, there's no opportunity to pass. Yeah, what he's going to have to do is find a place where it's not as dusty on the course, get right up on Freddie like he has now, and then hopefully put a little bit of pressure on Fred and force Fred into a mistake. But you can see Rodney worked his way up on Fred. Now we're popping out in the open, it's dusting back up, and he's kind of got to drop back again. Well, that's Steve Hatch's pit crew. He's coming in for gas. It looks like it's going to be just a splash and go. He'll get a taste of water, get some new goggles. Hey, you can see the whole crew there jumping in there. Unfortunately, Steve's regular mechanic, Marshall Plum, uh, he had a death in the family. We're sorry to hear about that, and the rest of the crew's filling in for him. We wish Marshall well and hope he's back soon. Actually, that was uh, Laurie Smith that gave him the water and uh, shouted some pit instructions. Yeah, when you have a big team like that, everybody jumps in there and helps everybody else get the job done. See Rodney, too, he's taking a look over his shoulder there. When he's doing that, he's probably looking back, seeing who's behind him. So in case, he'll probably see Shane Watts and get the pin signal that Shane Watts is coming. So you can probably expect Rodney Part to put more pressure on Freddie now. I, I don't know how he could see anyone behind him. That was Mike Lafferty, incidentally, that went through in fourth place. So the running order is Fred Andrews, Rodney Smith. Now here comes Rodney. He's in second. Third place is Shane Watts. And uh, in fourth place, it is Mike Lafferty. Missing is Josh McLevy. He was up there in the early going, but has now dropped out of at least the top four. Yeah, the front group, they're starting to pull away from everybody. And Shane, he's right up there putting pressure on. Uh, there's Chucky Woodford and Robbie Jenks with battling for sixth and seventh. Well, this is a good place to actually if you pass. Rodney's gotten close to Fred. And in this creek section, there'll be some room to pass. And also, there won't be the dust you have to deal with. 
at least uh, Rodney, it looks like he wants to show him a wheel, and you're right, there is no dust there. It's kind of slippery, slimy, which, uh, it, you know what? It's not dust, but it is danger of another variety, another type. One is just as bad as the other. And some encouragement from uh, bystanders as the leaders go through. Andrews and Smith down that creek bed with water in it. Shane Watts holding down a number three position. And because we were in a wood section just a short ago, I would have thought that, yep, here he is. Mike Lafferty has gained a little bit of ground on the front runners in front of him. It's Andrew Smith, Watson, Lafferty, and we'll be back. Welcome back and check this out. Rodney Smith, while we were away, has taken over the front runner's position. He's stopping for gas before he heads out on the final lap. Now behind him, already in the pits, is Brett Andrews. He has also stopped for gas. We caught just a glimpse of him. And there goes Smith. He holds on to the front runner's position and he will lead this final lap. Here's Watts in the pits. Watts is in third. Yeah, all the top guys, the top, actually there's Mike Lafferty right behind him, so we've got the top four guys pitting. Rodney, we saw him putting pressure on Fred right before the end of that lap, so he must have snuck around Fred somewhere. He's in the lead, and now he's the one that's going to make people eat dust. Uh-oh, Michael, his bike, boy, is loading up. He's been having that problem all year. And you see his KTM pit crew pushing him off there, get that thing going, and Mike didn't need that. So there's your leader, Rodney Smith. Now behind him will come Fred Andrews. There's Fred Andrews, so it's Fred's turn to eat some of that dust. Let's see how he does in it. And in third place, we are going to see uh, Shane Watts. And fourth is Mike Lafferty. There's Watts holding down a number three position. And with this heat that we've had today, the 85 degree weather, the course is drying out and it's getting dustier as we go. But Freddie, he's still stuck on Rodney's rear fender. These two, boy, we saw him two weeks ago at Loretta Lynn's and they're continuing the battle. Mark, we talked about that before we went to commercial break was Rodney Smith just biding his time? And if so, he found the opportunity, made the pass. Here comes, uh, again, Shane Watson third. He found the opportunity, made the pass, and now Fred is in that position. You know these guys. Will Fred Bonsai look for a place to get around and go for broke, or will he uh, do the same thing, be as patient as Rodney Smith was? I don't think Freddie will be as patient because he's been out front. He knows what it's like in the clear riding. And if he waits too long, Freddie, Rodney could very well get away from him. Rodney was real smart. He wait, waited till Freddie got into traffic, and then he made his move. I'll point out something else that maybe we're ignoring. Uh, we're more or less giving the race to either Rodney Smith or Fred Andrews, but only a few feet back comes that guy with a big number one on his motorcycle. Shane Watts. You bet. Yeah, he's uh, snuck up on him before. Here he comes through the section. You see the dust and the traffic they're having to deal with. These last two laps are going to be, be quite a handful for these guys. Folks, I guarantee you this. The distance between himself and Fred Andrews is negligible. When you are Shane Watts, you can make up anything. He's Superman and aboard the KTM Moto Cam. And uh, we're out in the woods behind Watts, the guy we were just talking about. Look at him thread his way through the trees. Yes, you can see, Shane, this is the part where he can really make up ground on the guys because we're not going to have the dust that we've been talking about all day long. And you can see him, he's just getting through the trees extremely quick, standing up, just making that bike sing. Now, Shane Watts understands when you get into the second half of the race that you had best be prepared. And I think, really, he knows that you had best saved just a little bit for that last half of the race. So you got a little something extra to go out and hopefully put a hurting on the guys in front of him. Of course, you know what? They've saved themselves, too. So how is he going to be able to do that? Well, we've seen him do it many, many times before. That's why he's probably carrying that number one plate. But Rodney, he also, he's won 10 AMA national championships. So he's very familiar with winning races. Out of the dust comes a little creek crossing. Rodney and Fred are both through it. And here comes Shane Watts. And you know what? They have put a couple of lapped riders, riders that are being lapped, in between themselves and the third place of Shane Watts. Now that's going to make it tougher on Watts. Watch and you see what I mean. Now here's, here's 31 Smith, here's Andrews. Now watch, there should be a couple of riders ahead of Shane Watts. Ah, there they are, there's two, now there's only one left as Shane gets around him in good shape. Yeah, and two with Fred and Rodney up front, the two of them are making a lot of dust and it's gonna be really hard for Shane to make up the final distance to close in on those two. And here comes Josh McClevey. We wondered where he went, he's back in fifth place. Let's go back to uh, pit row where Bob Walker is standing by for a late pit report. Bob, what do you got for us? 
I got Rodney Smith's wife here. He's in the lead right now, and she's got the extra motivation for him here on the last lap. We're going to push him through to the last lap, and he's going to come across that finish line first. Oh. What's she going to do, hit him with that board? <laughs> she's probably going to hit Fred with that board. <laughs> <laughs> if she's any type of pit crew there. <laughs> There's the guy that's going to get that side. Yep, Rodney, he's... Uh, in years past, he, Rodney, I worked with him for seven years. In those seven years, we won a championship every time. And he's always started out the season kind of slow, never really at the top, and he just kind of builds off that. And I'm seeing a lot of that in him this year. Now, you and I know he never would have won those championships if you were not at his side. There's no <laughs> question in my mind. Well, he's looking pretty good today, and I, I don't think I had as much to do with it as he does. And I think his wife, Lori, has even more uh, oh, we, to do with him winning. We had a uh, even more or less? More? I, I would have to say you're right. We had a quick look. Maybe we'll see it again when Shane Watts goes through. You see the guy through the dust that is waving the white flag. Here we go, and that signifies one lap remaining, one lap of this contest. Now Shane Watts has checked through the final checkpoint of the day, and uh, out the other end already is uh, Fred Andrews and, of course, Rodney Smith. Here comes Mike Lafferty in fourth place, and he is through the check. Hey, stick with us. This one is just getting exciting. Our leader is Rodney Smith. Fred Andrews had led the early laps. Rodney passed him at the end of uh, the third lap. And Shane Watts, working toward the front from a very, very poor start, is all the way up to third. And it is a strong third, I might add. Yes, he done, did a great job to move up so quickly in these conditions. Rodney, he's taking over control of the race. He's starting to put a little bit of distance on Fred. And if he gets a couple uh, riders in between him and Fred to make even more dust, Freddie's going to have his work cut out for him. Is that not key at this point in uh, this race to try to put riders in between yourself and the guys behind you? It's extremely key because this is the last lap. The sooner you can get by traffic, the, the better off you are. They won't get a chance to screw you up. And, you know, anything you can do to get more time between you and the guy in second place is going to help you. Here is Fred Andrews, and he puts a pass on a lap rider. He's still up into second place, but has fallen back off the pace just ever so slightly. Third place we should see coming through, and here he is. That is Shane Watts, the KTM rider. Shane holding down third after that miserable start, and in fourth, if we go back, we'll find uh, Mike Lafferty. There he is aboard his KTM. He's the defending enduro champion. Yes, and two throughout the day, the conditions are going to deteriorate. Boy, you can see the dust. It's just getting thicker as the day goes on, and Rodney, he just needs to keep twisting that throttle back and getting to the finish. Our CD Boots Thrill Seeker shot of the day, and for the second week in a row, it concerns our Motocam operator or rider. You want to tell us what's happening here, Mark? It looks like our Motocam guy is sloughing off on the job. He's sitting there laying on the ground taking a nap. <laughs> he's, he's looking around to make sure he's not going to be run over and he picks himself up he later told us that sorry guys i bounced off a rock and went on my head but he didn't break the camera that's that's the uh, good side of the fence rodney smith still looking for new lines as he goes around some of the slower riders boy and fred andrews still running in second place now freddie or rodney's doing a really good job taking those alternate lines getting around lap riders being very aggressive because he knows if uh, he lets Freddie get close to him, it's all over with. Freddie will do anything he can to get around him. Occasionally, you can hear the riders hollering at the riders in front of them. They're asking them to move over, and 99.9% .9 of the time, they will do just that. They will get out of the way to not uh, impede the progress of those that are racing for the win behind them. Yeah, and the nice thing about that, if you let one of these guys get around you, you can jump in behind them and learn a lot from them and actually help your results go up. The guy uh, took an alternate line to try to get around Mike Lafferty. Now, that <laughs> seems kind of silly to me, Lafferty being one of the fastest riders in the way. Well, you know what? Maybe Mike was in the alternate line. <laughs> That's probably it. Here, Rodney, out in the grass track, you can see him. He's really making time, riding really smooth, really smart. Rodney's one of those riders that's rides extremely smart when he gets in the lead it's very difficult to get around him well it's incredible to me that after four laps starting lap number five these riders have as much energy as they do it looks like they have actually picked up the pace and are going faster now than they were at the outset of this race but when you get into this stage of the race your mind takes over i've been there you just you know that wind's coming, you just get block everything else out and just pay attention and focus on what you're trying to do, and that's win a race. 
And when you've won them in the past, you know you can do it. And it just, uh, and when you have a guy like Freddie Andrews chasing you, it makes you go a lot faster also. Fred Andrews, of course, the leader for the early part of the race, or in the early part of the race. Drop back now to second place. Wow, look at these guys. They are on the gas. That is Shane Watts. And yeah, Shane's running all alone back there in third. Freddie's kind of got away from him a little bit, but uh, Mike Lafferty's not pushing, putting much pressure on him either. Here comes Rodney behind uh, a ride there trying to get around him. Freddie's not too far back. That's probably the only thing Rodney's really worried about is getting tangled up with somebody else or something and letting Fred get a chance to catch him. Oh, you could hear Rodney Hauer. There's Rodney's uh, wife, Lori, holding that uh, magical sign out. And Freddie was right on Rodney there. In this uh, section down here where you can see he's twisted it back just a little bit and he's reeling Rodney right in. Hey, Smith, Andrews, Watts, Lafferty, when we come back, we'll wrap it up. Stick with us on Fox Sports Net. Grand National Cross Country Racing has been brought to you by KTM Sport Motorcycles and by CD Boots. Welcome back as we are just about set to wrap this one up. The Gladiator GNCC from Sparta, Kentucky. There's your leader, Rodney Smith. Oh, he has really pounded this racetrack the last couple of laps. He gained the lead and uh, has not looked back. Now, close behind is Fred Andrews. If Smith makes any kind of a mistake, Andrews is going to have him for lunch. Yeah, but Rodney, he's getting real close to the finish. He's ridden a great race today. He trains really hard, and boy, there's the checkered flag for our winner. And he, he takes it in style. Had a crossed-up wheelie going up that hill and, and uh, just styling for the people. That's what kind of energy you have when it's all over. Yeah, and then... Uh, Fred, yeah, Fred is coasting across the line, and why not? Here comes Shane Watts. Watts is all alone in third, but certainly not threatening uh, uh, Fred at all, so he just took it easy. Let's go down to Bob Walker. Another hard day work out there, Rodney Smith. How does it feel to get back up on top as the points leader? Yeah, it feels really good. You know, I had a little lead coming into this race, and uh, I wanted to try to capitalize on that and get a good start, which my Suzuki did. And, uh, you know, I sat right in second where I wanted to be. Good job, Freddie. And, uh, you know, I sat right there in second, came into gas. I took over control of the race, and, you know, Freddie was riding a hell of a race. He made one mistake out there, and uh, I just happened to capitalize on it there, and I uh, ran it to the finish. Great job. Thank you very much. <laughs> now there's the real trophy, hugs and kisses from Lori. Rodney wins it, followed by Fred Andrews, Shane Watts, Mike Lafferty, Josh McLevy. Now Josh did a great job. He was third uh, throughout the early part of the race and uh, held on to finish in the top five. Mike Kudrowski never a factor, nor was Randy Hatch or Steve, uh, Randy Hawkins rather, or Steve Hatch. And you know what, that kind of surprised me. Meanwhile, second place, Fred Andrews is standing by with Jen Hildreth. Okay, here with Fred Andrews, Fred's second place finish. I know you were battling out there with Rodney Smith. What happened? When did he take the lead? Well, we talked about it earlier, get out front and give him the dust, and I was giving him the dust, and uh, I made one mistake. That's all it took. He passed me and started dusting me, and I don't know how he was staying behind me because it was really dusty out there, and, and he rode a great race, and second's good. I've been struggling all year, so I'll take second. My uh, Pro Circuit Cornwall Tools Kawasaki is awesome, and... Uh, I'm getting back into him. Win me a couple more. All right, Fred Andrews, first last round, second this round. Now let's go to Bob Walker with third place. Shane Watts, no surprises today. Complete race. A little tough, tough riding out there, huh? No, it's pretty good actually. I, you know, I've done my training during the week, and it's, it's just so disappointing. It's dusty, and I get a bad start. I catch these guys, and then all the dust, I fall back. I just keep catching up, and it really sucks. And I, it doesn't do much for me, but, you know, full credit to these guys. They went out and got a good start, and they end up, you know, doing what had to be done. But it's disappointing I can't show, show my real talent when the dust holds it back, but maybe next time. Here are the point standings after six of 13 rounds. Rodney Smith is on top and the only rider with three wins now with 145. Shane Watts still holds down second, then Andrews. Uh, has worked up to third after gaining no points in the opening round. Next race, well, it'll be ATVs in round seven. On behalf of uh, Mark Hyde, Bob Walker, and Jed Hildreth, I'm Larry Myers. So long, everyone, and thanks for joining us.